Hi everybody, I'm Dana Durnford, also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org, and you can find my videos in Fukushima presentations throughout the internet, thank goodness, and you'll find them live at livestream.com regularly at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Canada time, and today we're going to talk about climate scientists and COP21, and we're going to talk about how they ignored and the data that they did ignore and the significance of that is detrimental to your life and your loved one's life uh, till the end of time and for your future generations. You have to get in action right now. You have to become aware right now and protect yourself. No one's going to help you. No one's going to protect you in the system itself. You're too busy trying to bury it. What happened in Japan's reactors? It wasn't even brought up at COP21. An utter betrayal in every aspect of that word and when you think about the implications for that they are devastating to this entire friggin planet bar nothing every creature every animal on the entire continents that we're familiar with is now under a nuclear war it's in a nuclear assault and so we have to get our butts in gear and we're just waiting for that to play out so i can stop talking like this <laughs> and I was got a little tilt in my camera not going to be fixing that okay I try to fix it it doesn't really work that way that's almost normal there you go now I look straight yay Dana is straight good job Dana welcome back to the real world there's such a thing as the real world now, I want you to think about climate scientists. I'm going to give you a bunch of examples of what a climate scientist uh, propagates out, of course. The Australian prefer, uh, professor, global warming deniers should be sentenced to death. I'm just going to run through these very quick and come over and say hi to everybody in the chat room. Uh, and I'll leave you on this one as we say hi to everybody in the chat room. Big polluters, one massive container ship equals 50 million cars. There's 90,000 of them out there. That's 42 trillion people driving cars every day. But it's actually much worse than that. And so, let me hit a few more. CEO, he hates the thought that you might retire. He can retire whenever he feels like it, but he's made so much money and he makes so much money every year. Why would he, right? Climate alarmist calls for burning down skeptics' homes. Climate change skepticism and sickness must be treated. Climate funds sink UN diplomatic immunity. Uh, death threats anyone. This is the one we started off with. Uh, global warming deniers. Well, the people who deny Fukushima, should they be sentenced to death too? The people come out and say Fukushima didn't happen and that Fukushima is not an event. Should they be sentenced to death too? Colin Brewer, Cornwall counselor, says disabled children should be put down. And... Uh, edible vaccine inventor jokes about calling the population with uh, Ebola. Environmental magazine advocates war crime trials for global warming skeptics. Eugenics movements calls for eco dictatorship under the UN. Global warming author barcode everybody at birth. How global warming is chilling free speech. Japan should hurry up and let the elderly die. Heartless. Oxford professor says genetically altering unborn babies is a personalities is a moral obligation scientists warrant geoengineering can kill billions of people eco-friendly light bulbs may be killing you and probably are that's just a, a polite way of the headline when you read the story they're killing you global government or the world will end but a UT professor calls for 90% of the world to kill you know 90% of the world and they're well on their way because he told you it was like that but it's actually like that and I'll come up and say hi to everybody. And we're going to come back to that stuff here in a second. And pick up on that one right there. Um, and good morning, everybody. And i got to turn off the Adobe before I can even do anything. Because we've got two streams going on. And that could be smurfing up on your end. Yesterday's audio was low. Um, my brakes didn't work. And I had a fire last night. Uh, I woke up. With smoke in the house full of, uh, from an extension cord that had a needle shoved through it. 
How's your day? <laughs> More on that coming up. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Elaine. Uh, ice cream, you scream. Nashville, er, WP, Mickey. In the chat room at livestream.com, 10.30 a.m. Streaming right now, of course, for anybody who's catching the live stream. Hi, Bob. Starlight. Sustainable, yeah, you're right, Elaine. Terry Ann Shanikin, which is Shanikin is uh, Elaine, and Terry Ann was the next one I was saying hi. Good morning, Terry Ann. Albert. Adam. Kate. Woo. All good. And did I miss anybody? Daniels. And uh, so you can't comment until the stream starts. And it takes us a few minutes to warm up. Rattle Shark. Jan Brooks. And Jan put up a video of mine last night, the post from yesterday, she corrected the audio. And so that's a really good video to have in your collection, that one from yesterday with that audio, collect it, and you should scoop it and go over and support Miss Milky the Clown 1, that's Jan Brooks' site. And, she, and Miss Milky the Clown and Miss Milky the Clown 1 has the whole history, has all the videos, not all of them, but it, it has a, you know, on each subject, right from the chronological order. She's lost a hundred videos accidentally or on purpose. Who knows? Someone done it to her. But uh, the whole collection for four and a half years is sitting at her site. Some serious information sitting right there from the, from these are just the, the milk pieces and and people and whatever on the subject that were worthy or getting traction and now they're they're in a big collection for you. And so Unit 4 now, they admit Unit 4, fuel pool disappeared. <laughs> Wrap your mind around that one. Oh, you know, every media on the planet is out there showing you beautiful spent fuel pools. Let's just run back to that. Hi, Kay. And anybody I didn't get? Clint. And just stay there for another second. Because it takes us five minutes to get up and rolling. Yeah, we got some weird stuff. And that was a brand new uh, extension cord, like a week old. There's no way anybody tread on it or something like that. It's protected in a little area. It's a plug and play, right? And I had to straighten that cord out like a week ago. <laughs> anyway, um, where am I? Get back on board, Dana. Yoink. That's, uh, that's what a climate scientist is guilty of, what you see in that picture, right? That's, that's what a climate scientist, that's their accomplishments, that's their accolades, right there. Print that out and give it to them. Zoom in on it, print it out and give it to your climate scientist friends and say thank you. That's what you represent. Climate scientists are pro-nuclear. So you go to climate, to be a climate scientist, to be propaganda a propaganda machine for the nuclear industry and to be propaganda yourself. Propaganda, the industry itself, that's what it teaches is propaganda. And you either buy into it or you don't. And there's a lot of people who will buy into it because you're not allowed to question the professor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so, <coughs> so, so what? Cesium-137 forecast. Now, Let's come back to Unit 4 for a second that we jumped around on. Stream is up and finally running. This is what they told us Unit 4 looks like, but that's what it looks like. Right? It looked like that. They tore everything off. But then they told you it looked like that. But now they admit, declassified papers, that all the fuel in the fuel pool is gone. Can you understand why that might be true? And then, if they're finally uh, willing to admit that, I'll cut another string of pictures here for you. Hang on. So let's just run through Fukushima very fast. Fukushima had a 9.0 earthquake. It shook the country like a blanket for how long? How many minutes? Six. That we know about. Six minutes. You got any idea how long that is? You got any idea how you can't even stand up 
You're talking about something that was filmed in Florida 30 minutes later. It traveled to their country at 9,000 miles per hour. That was a thousand times worse than Haiti in magnitudes. Oh, people are back and forth. Oh, it's only a hundred times worse. Okay, whatever. Even if it was only twice as worse. But the fact is, it wrecked that country. But right behind that came a tsunami. Yeah, I know. Not tsunami. Not tsunami. Dana, tsunami. So, me. So the tsunami never just came in and hit Fukushima, the actual military industrial complex, this directed energy weapon production facility. I mean, power plant. I mean, production facility for nuclear um, isotopes for directed energy weapons. Don't even get me started. Now, the tsunami never just come in and hit that place. But anyway, that place blew up over and over and melted down. And these places caught fire Blew up, lost their inventories. These are all melted reactors. One, two, three, and four. And so number four, they showed you that, right? They tore everything off the top of the building, all the way down to the ground almost. That's a 10-story building, see? That's why I say it that way, yeah? And then they put a little structure up alongside, but they don't touch each other. They do not touch each other. Okay. Think of it this way. You got a little shed out in your garden. Right? And it's debilitated. That shed was there 100 years before you bought the property. It's totally piece of junk. But it kind of has a historical value. But it's dangerous. You wouldn't let your kids play around with it because of all the rusty nails and and little glass shards and everything else and all the molds and whatever. Okay. Now, if someone says to you, we're going to build a support network alongside of it and up it and over your little shed in the back garden. We're going to put a crane in it so we can reach down in that shed and take out some stuff that's in the shed. And you're going to go, why would you do that? Oh, well, because it's an extraordinarily unbelievable radioactive Activity in there. It'll kill people. So, okay, well, that's probably a pretty good idea. You build that shed up there, go where it hits her. So, he builds the shed, but then you go watch the media and you say, workers are getting ready to take the fuel out of the fuel pool. And you're going, wait a second, it doesn't look like that inside of it. I got an old debilitated shed. It caught fire and blew up, and melted down, caught fire and blew up, caught fire and blew up some more. Killed everybody to try to go in there. Kill the robots, kill everything. But you want me to believe it looks like that? There's not even a roof inside of that place that kind of look like that. But then you're looking in the media, you roll out a roof for it. You say, wait a second. Hey, folks, my place looks like this. Why is the media saying it looks like that? Why is it saying it looks like that? The whole country looked like this. We know they're all melted down. How can you have a meltdown look like that? And how can those people be in there? And if they are in there, why, why does it look like that? And if it looks like that, why did you build that? And that is not in that structure they built alongside of it. It's in the, it's in the atmosphere. It's in the ocean. Okay. So far, so good. You with me so far? Good morning, Alex. Illusion is over. Shani can say an older man read the sign on her car about Fukushima and said, yeah, those people have a lot of problems. But it just goes to show you how the many wreck their ability to hide it. How, how so many people doing whatever they can do, doing everything, trying anything to get the word out that climate scientists... Um, what picture I got here? Oh, yeah, there's a climate scientist shaking you into a nuclear reactor. Coming up. <laughs> Dana, get your act together. Dana, there's a climate scientist. Climate, climate scientist. <coughs> I got to look away because it'll break your eardrum. <coughs> Excuse me. That's one way of looking at nuclear. It's a very realistic way of nuclear, looking at nuclear. Okay, all right. 
Do you get it yet? What they're doing to you? What the game is? Hang on, we're getting there. Dr. James Hansen, former head of NASA, uh, NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies. Oh, he hasn't been quoted any, any times, have he? Don't know what I got done now. You'll never see me again. I'm screwed up. <laughs> anyway, let's go listen to him and come back to him. And then we're going to show you some headlines from the last number of days. Okay, hang on. I never said I wasn't an expert. And I might never find him again. He might never be there. Hang on, Dana. Hang on, Dana. Okay. See, this is my lucky day. Here we go. I'm not sure how loud this is going to be. I got some problems to get worked out. There are multiple reasons, I think, why um, there's opposition to nuclear power plants. Listen to him. Nuclear energy is harder for people to understand, the idea of radiation. I mean, radiation is natural. Okay, there is natural radiation. And so, like, it's called homeostasis, and what your body does is regulates it. So if you get any more, and you do when everything you eat, because it's natural, you can't live without it. Everything on the planet is acclimated to it. Natural radiation is your genetic superior selection. But what he's supposed to be talking about is not that. What he's supposed to be talking about is the radiation we're talking about It needs uh, has terrorist laws, has nuclear waste sites, nuclear holding sites, I should say. And that it has an extra electron attached to it. So n nuclear is different because it has an extra electron. And that's why it kills things. And that's why we have terrorist laws, right? And dirty bombs, you're worried about dirty bombs, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's listen to what he's now going to say. The Earth is bombarded by radiation all the time. Yeah, but that's not real radiation. That's not like high-powered radiation. That's Mother Nature. That's what we're all acclimated. Everything I've got, everything around you has got natural emitters. There's around 260 of them. But they can't mutate a fruit fly. But if you take anything from a chain reaction, from a release, from an accident, from the reactors themselves, remember the fuel rods originally you can put on equipment and pick it up. After, a pound of it will kill everything on the planet. After, it's two million times worse than the refined product before it went through a chain reaction. But it's bombarded with neutrons and accepted electrons. And that's why we have terrorist laws, etc. dirty bombs. So now listen how he just flips natural radiation. So the radiation that was released, for example, in Three Mile Island. Was the stuff that had extra electrons attached to it. It's not from the sun. It's not the natural stuff. But the, that exposed the accident at Three Mile Island. Pennsylvania exposed uh, residents nearby to radiation um, which is equivalent to the amount of radiation that you get by flying in, in a commercial aircraft across the continent and back. Hang on. So it's not... <laughs> See, you can't get that grin off his face now. So here's a very prominent person at COP21 lying two years ago, lying, outright, bald-faced lie, climbing. And now all the client scientists will tell you these same lies. Everything I'm going to show you today, they'll deny, and but that's their game. That's what they got educated on. That's how come they exist. That's their whole purpose in life, is to trick you and deceive you with this same narrative we've been listening to for 70 years. Now they call them environmental scientists or climate scientists. These are pro-nuclear puke machines. That's all they are. They're not human like me or you. They're pro-nuclear puke machines. And if you don't buy into it, it's time to burn you out of there. Raise the retirement age. You need to be re-educated, right? Must be treated. You know, climate alarmists burn down skeptics. Climate fund sinks diplomatic. These people want diplomatic immunity because of what they're saying, because of what they're doing, because of what the people are going to kill. Death threats anyone? You know what I mean? Got to get rid of disabled children. That's a climate scientist mentality. How can you support that? How can you justify that? How can you sit there and allow these people to get away with that? Yeah? Well, 
We're going to jump back over before I lose track of what I'm doing. Because we know how easy that happens. <laughs> and let me get rid of that stuff for you. Okay, Dr. James Hansen. Yeah, here he is. He's former head of, of NASA. So why would we ever, ever want to look at anything they've ever said before? If they're going to allow people like that to exist. If they're not going to come out and hold people like that accountable. Who the freak is? Huh? So I'm a demon for coming out and trying to hold them accountable because nobody else will. Apparently. Because I've been vilified in the media throughout Canada. Mainstream media. Demonize me. We'll cover that maybe later. I got to go to court for the third quarter parents. And then the media... Just a quick note, is the media, I was charged with criminal harassment and nuclear pukes, just like that guy there. No different than that guy there, the people I'm, I'm charged with harassing. But what I'm doing is exposing these people, and they won't stop lying. And what am I supposed to do? Nobody else is going to hold them accountable. The climate scientists are out there. Every one of them, I got to go to war against. You do too. Everybody and every, because the creatures and, and the 8 billion, million other creatures on this planet don't have a friggin' voice. And what about all the people who don't know any better and boys into it? They never hear another narrative. They're, they're never, they're, they think it's like getting on an airplane. You can't talk to these people if they're in your community. And so what's wrong with me telling the truth? How did that become? But anyway, the media accused me of death threats when they know that's not true because they done interviews with me. I was charged with criminal harassment and nuclear pukes that don't have a leg to stand on. They don't even have a case. Their witnesses don't even have names. Wow, oh, scientists told me that Dana uh, was talking about me and was concerned. They don't give names. All kinds of statements like that in the court uh, disclosures. It's a total sham. I, and they made me take down 300 of these presentations. And now, why was I singled out? Why, why Dana? What made me different? I'll show you. You give me a chance. If you really want to hear the whole, the whole story, what you're seeing there is a representation of uh, 260 days in the last 12, 13 months. And what we done was we crowdfunded this uh, operation and we covered 15,000 miles of the coastline in 260 days. Right? That's why you haven't seen... That's why I'm, I'm back doing the things I'm doing, trying to get back up and build up an audience again and everything else, is because I spent 260 days on the ocean. And instead of looking like that throughout British Columbia, I got 14,000 hours underwater uh, as a commercial diver. Instead of looking like that everywhere that I'm familiar with, it all looks like this and this. These pictures are all from the same places. That's after Fukushima. And so the 9 million species... The 5,600 that would normally exist in that same spot like that and like that, every square millimeter are now empty. But the 4 million, 4 point whatever million species that are in the Pacific Ocean that before there was no room for them to recede that coastline or get on that coastline because all these other species took up every millimeter, uh, even though they're all gone, the other 4 million didn't see the coastline. And that the bird population from around 300, uh, say 168 residential and 149 migratory, we counted less than 11 species um, over 260 days, 15,000 miles, and, uh, you know, where we went through the entire coastline. Hurricanes, storm after storm. We wrecked the boat a number of times and rebuilt it and hit it back out. We, we, we suffered, you can't imagine. And that was to find out if there was really uh, an issue. And so we didn't know originally what it was going to be like. So all we'd done was done a species count throughout the whole coastline for 260 days and observed, recorded, and reported it. And because that had been vilified and demonized and attacked, and smear, a big smear campaign. And now, um, you know, I'm hitting down for my third court appearance. And that, I got to watch everything I'm saying because they're monitoring me looking for little ways to get at me. 
They're looking for weaknesses in what's happening and how this is processing so they can take advantage of it and wreck me even more. And that the people, you know, that are doing this to me have infiltrated my chat rooms and everywhere else and are constantly pumping me for information uh, that they have no reason to be looking for. That is none of their fucking business. And that the only reason you would look for it is to find a weakness in my defense. And that they're trying to give them people that are who are unjustly and unwarrantedly and involved in a major cover-up of the death of the Pacific Ocean extinction event, uh, trying to help them and are funded by them. These are, they have trillions of dollars a year at stake. We have all life on this planet. It has been irrevocably changed forever because of this a catastrophic event playing out in front of us. Now, Chir Chernobyl was, uh, Videl said, was equal to 400. Look at the third sentence. For the next, that was 2006, by the way. And for the next 10 days, spewed equivalent 400 Hiroshima bombs worth of radioactivity across North America. Yeah? Let's just go talk about Chernobyl right quick. Yummy Chernobyl, Chernobyl. Here we go. I'm back. Not sure how that's going to work. Oh, I know how that works. Yeah, hang on. Uh -huh. So this is where the brain regions over Chernobyl. And they're still doing that today and all over the country in order to mitigate the radioactive fallout. And so all countries in North America... Um, all countries in North America, that's what they have for a mitigation plan for a nuclear accidents, chemtrail, the sky. And if you don't understand that technology, uh, think about Vietnam War, where they chemtrailed the sky for nine years, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, until they took every tree and every plant, the, uh, the leaves off, it defoliated. Now, this was a toxin and a dioxin. And this is banned worldwide. That what they used, the Agent Orange, was a dioxin. Um, and it's around 3 million disabled children with no legs or arms or faces and stuff like that because of Chernobyl. But Chernobyl only lasted 10 days. Think about um, how they done this for nine years to that country. So what you're seeing there, that's collective punishment. So when you shoot at a, a soldier, you see or a ship, or, or you're a fighter jet, right? You're shooting at the military machine itself. But when you come in and you chemtrail for nine years, no one's denying this happened, but everybody denies the ability to do this doesn't exist because they forget so fast because they don't want to be associated with what happened in Vietnam. They don't want to drag that back out. But nine years of chemtrailing. But every country has that same mitigation plan for radioactive fallout, and examples of that are right there. And right here. And so, how come Japan doesn't have one of these fields? Huh? Because they're reselling the equipment. And the foreign countries and stuff like that. And they're shipping it over. To, they want to go to war so they can take a lot of that stuff and bring it over and use it in the war-torn countries. And irradiate the soldiers and their loved ones and friends and families. They don't care. They are out of control. And you, you have to hold them accountable. Would be like Chernobyl if uh, spent fuel catches fire. Each reactor holds 3,400. People, please listen to what I'm saying. Each reactor contains 3,450 fuel assemblies. Each assembly is around 12 feet long. There's 80 rods in each one. Each rod is around uh, 18 pounds. So there's around 5 million pounds in a reactor. Okay. Um, five million pounds in each of those reactors. Now, a bomb has five or ten pounds of plutonium. So there's nothing left in that reactor, see? Not just because it blew up and caught fire and blew up and caught fire and blew up and melted down and they came out and pretended that everything was fine. It looks fine, but when you look at the actual pictures in number four, shocking. How big that alloy was, was it? How, how shocking is that, see? Or let alone the fact that we done 15,000 miles of the coastline and the coastline is stripped. 
It didn't look like that anywhere. And the whole coast, no matter where you go, should look like that. But that's Louise Narles. That's Louise Narles pre-Fukushima. That's Louise Narles after Fukushima. That's Louise Narles after Fukushima this year. I'm part of that 260-day, 15,000-mile expedition that i done on that boat there. If you use the model of Chernobyl, Chernobyl only lasted 10 days. Fukushima didn't stop, right? It ain't going to stop. The models are well known from the radioactive fallout from Japan for just a couple of radioactive isotopes. Uh, just These models are only based over a couple of days. A single reactor for a couple of days releases, then the modeling is around 30, 40 days. This one is 40 days. This is Noah's model. And the jet streams come directly over. And so we're way behind on everything I want to talk about. But once again, the spent fuel pool, have a look at it. Uh, coming up. Spent fuel. Just click it, Dina, and get it over with, Dina. Okay, let's come back and then jump back and forth here coming up. Chernobyl, just to put it in the context for you, that's all I'm trying to do. Under 3% of the children exposed to Chernobyl radiation while in the womb were diagnosed as healthy at the age of seven. But Kafiana, <coughs> here's the elephant foot. Kafiana said over 3 million children suffered disabilities. We know they have uh, an enormous amount of orphanages full of uh, disfigured uh, children from Chernobyl that are ostracized and hid away, you know. Three million children require treatment. Treatment. Here's a Chernobyl plume, I hope. So that's the Chernobyl plume. They're only putting cesium-137 in there. But Chernobyl was one-third the size of Fukushima. Chernobyl was a 30... Uh, percent um, meltdown and that's a long video so we'll just shoot over this one second Chernobyl lasted 10 Fukushima didn't stop Chernobyl one third the size of any of them Fukushima was four full meltdowns Chernobyl they abandoned the, gra the homes in Fukushima they uh, free homes for pregnant women just gonna let that finish playing out at Chernobyl that's the Chernobyl model, but Chernobyl, once again, one-third the size of any of the reactors in Japan. Now they admit Unit 2 and Unit 4 100% lost their inventory. The fuel pool is where they store the reactors. Do you get it? At the roof. I'll show you some more coming up. It's really important what I'm showing you today. Huh? And climate scientists is how they're hiding all of this, how they're marginalizing all of this, and how they're vilifying people like me for showing it to you. Oh, Dan is not a climate scientist. No, thank goodness, because you would never hear the truth. I can assure you, I'm the only person out there that's showing you all everything you're seeing each day. In any shape or form, I'm the only one on the planet doing it that I know about, that is able to bring you stuff like this every day. And actually talking about it. And actually putting yourself out front and center all the time. And it has been charged by the very people that are covering it up, by the very industries that have covered it up. Woods Hole and University of Victoria use the FBI and Canadian RCMP in Saanich, Victoria, Police Department to put me on a terrorist list for showing you this. But now they're starting to have to admit that it's, this is Chernobyl model you're looking at. And um, the 8th of March, I think, is where you're at now. You can see how, do you think this turned to fairy dust just because the modeling looks smaller at the end of it? That's the game, right? Then, then everything disappears, <laughs> so to speak, right? Or there's not so much anymore. <laughs> you really got to think about what they just done to you, haven't you? How can you not, right? But anyway, let's keep going. Um, confused and lost. Chernobyl, over 600 of the pilots, right? This was a photographer here, but over 600 of the pilots, all of them, every one of them died. That's the elephant foot. Japan, we got no elephant foot, no concept. 600,000 conscripted. We know in Chernobyl that they went and took people off the streets, right? In Chernobyl, I'll play that little clip for you. Chernobyl, they done the same thing in UK for Sellafield. They kidnap people off the streets. Streets. So just before we move on, I want to see if I find that clip. 
Uh, took people from the theaters at UK. Hang on. I might find it. I might still be here. Uh, okay. When the robots broke down because of the extreme radioactivity, men were sent in to clean up the site. They were not volunteers. They were picked up off the streets and press ganged onto the roof. So picked up off the street, press ganged on to the roof. Uh, that should disappear, sorry. Sometimes I don't know who the hell I am uh, or where the hell I am. So think about that. And there was 400,000, uh, there were 600,000 conscripted workers, uh, military, 400,000 tradespeople or so, or more, that we know about. And then they were jacking people off the streets. Right, they'd done that in uh, UK, right? And so I'll just play one more clip about that. We got the volume hopefully working better now, but. So here's what they'd done They took people from the back rows of the theaters because the cops wouldn't do it anymore and 5,000 nuclear employees or whatever it is, they couldn't get anybody to go in there. They said they claimed they did originally, but then they ran out of workers. But there's 5,000 people at the plant. So what they done was they went to the UK to a theater and snatched people from the back row, the two back rows. You don't believe me? Strap yourselves in. I got everything set up proper is the big question to push the burning fuel through uh, into the back of the reactor. But the heat had melted the cartridges, so they'd become stuck inside the core. They were forced to use scaffolding poles they'd found nearby to try and push the cartridges out. Radiation was so intense they could only work a few hours. They were running out of firefighters. The police uh, from the factory had turned up looking for volunteers uh, and they brought a bus and they decided the best way to get the volunteers was to go to the cinema and uh, and volunteer the back two rows uh, at, the, uh, at the show to go into the factory to, uh, as it turned out, to uh, help push the fuel rods out of the, uh, out of the reactor. So they kidnapped people from the back row and drove them into a nuclear chain reaction and made them do the job. <laughs> Should have sent this guy here in. That would have been a much better solution. Uh, uh, I hate the thought of going to this folder, trust me. But here we are nevertheless. We got a doozy here. I'm not sure. Fukushima report declassified worse than we're told. Oh, okay. How worse is it? How worse could it be? A new declassified report from the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission written on... Now, we covered that before, trust me. Just days after the disaster, we now know 100% that a total fuel, spent fuel pool was released to the atmosphere from Unit 4. And thank you for actually mentioning that. Thank goodness somebody mentioned something. Worse than we are told. Thank you for mentioning that. I'm truly humbled that you actually put that out there in the media. Because that's the reality and everybody knew it. And that's some of the first emails you would find if you go through the NRC's declassified. But it only took four and a half years for someone to go through it. I know people have went through all this. People have covered them repeatedly verbatim and so that, that you know in unit 4 let's go look at unit 4 here in a second if I can find unit 4 I can't be hit away too far I got it yeah oh yeah we covered that extensively already right Yunk. unit 4 ripped it all off how could it be? How could you get? You remember all the headlines? We're going to get. I'll go find it. Hang on. Oh, Dana, you had to go and do it. You did it. You done it. Let me take a second. I can import that. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
you number four BB. We never find it. <laughs> okay, I, I know where so. One second, folks. Reactors, nuclear lap dogs, not reactors. Unit four, maybe a fake set. All right, there you go. That's the, the one I pumped together for everybody. And now I separated everything, so that's probably not going to work very well for me. Hang on, I got to move it just a little bit. Otherwise, when I try to do something later, it's going to haunt me. Okay, we got it. Kind of. So here comes unit four. Right spin fuel pull. That's supposed to be even higher. See that crane you're looking at? But the media all come out, right, about number four. And look at the picture from their pages to the left, the little tiny picture, right? And what they were doing was showing you this picture, but they weren't showing you the other build, the actual building, right? But that's what it looks like. I married them together for you. Here's another example of what media showed you, but what the building actually looks like. And here's the media showing you the building. Look at the ceiling in that picture. Halfway point for Fukushima transfer, but the building is totally wrecked. See? Yeah? So Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant begins fuel, right? BBC, showing you a beautiful symmetrical building. Inside of one, alongside of it that I, I supplied for you, showing the, the buildings themselves and how they detonated. See, on the right hand side, here's Seth Dorn, CBS, saying he's inside of it. That he's inside. Right, he's taking it to a whole new level. Right, and Formidable done the same thing. Showed you that, and never once said, "Hey, by the way, here's what the fuel pool looked like originally. How did it get here? Why ask a question if you're media? I wonder. How does that work?" I thought that's what media does. Removal of the fuel rods began at Fukushima, but there's nothing there. Look at the pool they're showing you. CBC, Canadian media, showing you that. Perpetrating the lie. RT, look. They showed it to you, but now they come out. And now they showed that one. Let me get rid of that stuff over here for you. Let's keep going. Let's go over and say hi to everybody for a quick second. Hi, everybody. Uh... Ice cream, K, Albert, Tyrion. And that's the last we heard about that, Tyrion, yeah. Mickey, RW. Undiscovered new tech. <laughs> There's no way these reactors will hold up. No, they can't. That's right, Elaine. Albert, K, Clint, Mickey. Anybody I miss some apologies. Let's keep going. Let's keep rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay. Let's bump that out of the way. Uh huh. Reduced emergency planning around Vermont Yankee. But if you actually look at it, there's still issues, huge issues. You can't decommission that place for another 30, 40, 50 years. You got all the nuclear waste all over the site. And right off the bat, they want to cut back on money. Yeah, and so just a quick reminder, I'm having a cigarette, my cigarettes don't have 7,000 chemicals, CNTs, Canadian Natural Tobacco. And so why don't climate scientists say cigarettes have 7,000 chemicals, instead they say nicotine causes cancer when there's no proof of that. Do an academic study after, after, after academic study now for about 40 years on nicotine trying to cause cancer show it links to cancer, can't do it. The 7,000 chemicals, there's many studies show they link to cancer, but why don't they tell you that? Go look it up yourself, you find out that I'm not lying to you, that I'm telling you the truth. And that if you're a nuclear scientist and you don't know anything I'm telling you today, it's not too late to come onto the reality side, to the real side and expose these people. You can make millions of dollars by telling the truth, but by coming out and trying to be one of those people, controlled opposition, we will work you out. There'll be no easy roads for anybody from here on out. The world is tired. But here's Vermont Yankee. Here's corporations saying that corporate personhood means we can do what we want. 1986 ban on nuclear waste burial was repealed in 2011. 
But when they created the band in 86, there's over a thousand medias reported it, but nobody reported this until long after. So he said he found out by accident. Um, let me see. Hang on. Voters in 100 towns approved a non buying the burial, storage, transportation, production, high level waste. Um, I can't find the one I was looking for. That's okay, let's keep going. Irradiated is the death toll mounds. Nuclear weapon workers must decide whether their jobs are worth it. The hidden legacy is 70 years atomic weaponry. Well, 70 years to tell you like a banana potato chip walking in the sunshine. At some point, that had to come back in your face. At some point, that had to come out of the ground. At some point, that had to go into communities and rivers and estuaries and lakes and kill Pacific Oceans. At some point, that was bound to happen. So everybody that perpetrated the law are guilty of that crime. Bury, period. And if you're a climate scientist, you're an egregious perpetrator of the law. Period. Bar no excuses on that. You knew better. The hidden legacy. The hidden legacy. Hidden. Hidden. That's what a climate scientist does. They hide it. So a climate scientist is by definition um, a mass lying machine, a mass manipulating machine, a mass deception machine. And if they believe the deception, it only goes to show you how good it is. But how can you believe a banana is like a chain reaction? How come we don't have terrorist laws for bananas, you know? you got to be a genius. So the radiation from the plutonium, which is man-made, and it's got many daughters, not created by itself. It wasn't just plutonium that was coming through there, you can be sure. Developed breast cancer in a male. Um, he's one of 107,000 Americans diagnosed with cancer or other diseases. Right. For his troubles, the government got 350000 hush money. A special fund created to get rid of the, the whistleblowers and then say, okay, we're going to give you money, now you can't talk about it no more. Not everybody agreed to that, but the majority did. Now, he wants to donate his body to science. Well, he's nuclear waste. Now, with the country embarking on an ambitious $1 trillion plan to modernize, modernize its nuclear weapons... Have workers have fears that they haven't learned the lessons? No. There is no lesson that they, the only lesson there is they can get a lot more money if we can hide it for just a little bit longer. Get Russia out there, get them shooting bombs close to us. And people will spend the money on nuclear. They'll do anything to create fear to get the money. That's how they work. That's how they've done it all along. They got all these terrorist attacks and dirty bomb drills to fear you to give them money. To, to, to scare your loved ones, terrify your children. And you should be worried about Fukushima and what is, that has killed the Pacific Ocean. That has killed the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is dead in British Columbia, Canada, and the coastline, and that ocean body of water, four million species didn't recede the coastline, like I showed you earlier. Chernobyl is a candlestick. Let's keep going anyway. Chernobyl is a candlestick to what Fukushima is doing. Let's run back, fort, back, fort, back, fort, back, and fort. See what kind of pooey we can get into. Uh, uh, let's go back up here for a second. I mean, in Fukushima, 9 million bags, nuclear waste. 9 million bags. 9 million bags. That is friggin' terrifying. And you can see the bag stored. They got tarps over it, some of it. Not all of it. Who wants that job? Who's going to go up there and walk around on man-made radiation? As you, you breathe in a particle, that's a cancer in 10 or 15 years. If you breathe in a the particle, there's 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies will show up, like Alzheimer's, dementia, and uh, diabetes, and autism, and respiratory, liver, and lung, heart, pituitary, breast cancers, Chris, Dr. Christopher Busby showed in a study with his um, peers recently that if you're a woman and you live within 15 mile radius, 
that doesn't mean that it stops at that border. Radiation doesn't respect borders. But if you live within that 15-mile zone, um, they showed you were six times more likely to have cancer, or there were six times more cancer is a better way to put it for women, breast cancer. And a couple of year, a year and a half ago, there was a study, I can't remember that one, i got to find it, i got it there, of a lady who was doing a study on something else and showed that radiation, man-made radiation, causes breast cancer by proxy. Whoops. I couldn't have been very happy about that one. Let me come over and make sure everything is running smooth. Hi, everyone. Clint, Albert, everybody. Kay, Rattle, Mickey, Illusion. We're still rocking and rolling. Let's keep moving. We got nine minutes left to whip through something. Okay, let's boogie out of that. That was a nine million bags. See how fast it is loose track. Fatalities and injuries resulting from the Fukushima nat, uh, nuclear disasters, uh, apocalyptic event. Besides the death of the Pacific Ocean, a lie is being perpetrated on the internet and no fatalities. And Wade Allison is one of those people from Oxford that is doing that constantly. And so is uh, Woods Hole and UVic. There are three nuclear core meltdowns at Fukushima nuclear catastrophe site in China Syndrome with an underground river constantly flowing over them. But they're also there with the pump trucks pumping water on the reactors and sucking that stuff out. But the water that runs from the river, from the mountain behind it, because it's built on an old riverbed, right, a thousand-year-old riverbed that washed the sediment away all the way down to the bedrock. That's what a riverbed is. Uh, nuclear is that. We're going to rush through this because but we're going to hit this again some other day. Uh, we got lost here. I done something wrong. I was clicking on the wrong one, no doubt. Uh, so, according to the Japanese Nuclear Industry Safety Agency, the earthquake and tsunami affected 14 nuclear reactors at four sites. 14 reactors at four sites. And by the way, I changed the format. Dina. I changed the format yesterday I smurfed up but I changed the format and for quality on the audio yesterday I got that fixed today obviously but yesterday's audio and Jan Brooks uh, got that video up and I'm glad I'm so thankful that she done that and there's a lot of work to do that folks you don't understand right just getting it and then re-rendering it and getting it back up on your site is and you know it's, that's a lot of work trust me just that a little it might sound simple but it's not even when you have all kinds of experience it's not it's a big project an hour and a half video you need a very powerful computer uh, like seriously powerful computer to do it properly and so if you got a even a two thousand dollar computer still takes forever to render such a big file and now what I'm doing is I'm recording this as we're streaming now today is a higher quality it's around normally on my youtube channel a beautiful girl by dana it's around a half a gigabyte that i was posting there and i realized that's a huge flaw and so what i'm doing now i'm rendering it a one hour shows around two and a half gigabytes three gigabytes or so and so i'm uploading that size file from here on out so it's a much better quality right much more clarity than what you're getting here that I'm recording at the same time and when the stream is over I'll immediately start start uploading that to my YouTube channel and so that'll be that's ongoing that I do each day but now it's much higher quality is being uploaded to YouTube and so if people want a high quality one they got to wait for an hour and a half for that to show up but after it shows up if it shows up it's still not rendered into its highest format you want to wait like two hours for a higher format of YouTube to show up a lower format will show up, but a couple hours later, you'll get that high quality will actually show up. And so if you're trying to share this with friends or families or put it on a DV or something like that, it's much better for you now because I'm putting a higher quality up at YouTube. And so if you come back the next day and got that one and put it on a DVD, now you would have total difference what you're seeing here at the live stream or that you've seen before will be reposted up. So that's... It's another bonus to make sure that everybody, everything becomes legible. 
And why you might not seem that way while you're watching the live stream is because of bandwidth live streaming issues. Re-uploading a very high quality after is, is a privilege that we can do that. And so I can record uh, four 400K cameras at the one time uh, with the software I got and edit it all after. That's real power. That's real horsepower. Yeah? <laughs> That's why I can get away with the stuff I'm doing each day. But I'm learning. It's a big learning curve. It's going to take a long time for me to learn how to use any of this properly. But meanwhile, we are using it properly. So just not as good as it could be. Right? So let's keep going. We're getting there. In a few weeks if they don't lock me up. So 14 reactors. So we got a boogie now. So 35 percent spike in infant mortality in northwestern USA and 48 percent in Philadelphia. That's Fox reporting on it. It's not that they made up the story. They reported on the story, okay? ENA News reported on it. <coughs> 22nd of December 2011, 14,000 deaths in North America. That was upgraded to 22,000. These are legitimate studies. This was an abnormality spike in fatalities for those couple of months compared to other years on top of that. But there was a record. Thyroid cancers, Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. And about thyroid can cancers in Fukushima. And so it is very evident from the numerous research papers of the nuclear industry, dose model is seriously flawed. And this means all their statements about safety levels are grossly inaccurate. That's, that's strong, okay? That's as strong as you can expect in an academic world. You don't get any stronger than that. Uh, March to 16, 2011, five people received lethal radiation doses just days after the start of the disaster. Uh, changes in congenial abnormalities, incidents in the West Coast in the United States after the arrival of Fukushima fallout. TEPCO deaths uh, workers are not reported. So 4% of 100,000 workers have reportedly died. 4,300 workers. 4,300. And on top of that, 64 members of the self-defense. 300 policemen have also died. And they were stood up in the centuries on the uh, what they call the safe zone, which there was no such thing, the whole planet, just, but Japan itself was brutalized all the way through Tokyo, too, brutalized, million becquels a square meter. This is on hinged numbers. Huge amount of ionizing radiation. They only needed just a small amount to kill that many, see? And that's only what they reported on. We already hit that one. I don't know why I ended up back there. So over 800 day laborers who have disappeared by contract from the union. So this is a, one thing I learned in Osaka from the president of the day laborers is that many of the day laborers being brought into the plant, they are not being registered and they're disappearing. There are over 800 day laborers who have disappeared from contract uh, attacked by the union, which means they had been killed or died during work. They disappeared. These were regular homeless people that were on the fringes of life. And so Japan is full of people that are homeless, the Fukushima, and that don't speak the language, are immigrants. A total of 1,232 deaths in Fukushima, Japan's prefecture over the past year were linked, just past year. The past year linked to a nuclear accident four years ago, up 18% from a year earlier, right? So there's numbers out there, they just hide it away from us. Wade Allison, UVic, uh, Woods Hole, and institutions like this are PR firms. They, they just do nothing but lie. Here's another guy, his worker died on the job, young fella. And he, he put cement over him, carted him off to another place. So here's an interesting one from a German on the Rhine's River. Uh, remember... Um, we're almost, we're at the end of the show. So let me finish off in this one. Strontium levels would skyrocket, would peak around 5,000 days later. 5,000 days later. But another 40,000 days would stay high for 40,000 days. It's like 120 years or something. 5,000 days is um, 12 years, I can't remember. I done the numbers last night, but I get lost sometimes. 
And so cesium would peak uh, 10,000 days later, 10,000 days. Cesium-137, but there's 100 times more strontium-90. and But uh, there's put them together, that's not as much as what the curium, okay. So, I'm going to keep, I'm going to shut her down. That's not as much as what the curium that came out of there. And so the models you're looking at behind me, that's, these are major institution models. We're not going to go into it. We're going to come in and say good day to everybody and thank you everybody for your patience and, and for everything you've done for me and for the the hope that you brought to these projects and, and to these expeditions and, and to showing the world that we can't ignore this a second longer, you know, that is something that is, is to be treasured, that is something that is spectacular and that is something we, we need to be proud of and that we are justified and that we have that moral high ground because we proved uh, in these expeditions that we take in uh, with that boat that's crowdfunded and 260 days, 15,000 miles, the arrows are representations only. We covered those, the entire coastline for 15,000 miles, 260 days, that was pertinent. And all the exposed coastline that we could hit in 20 miles, we done a, one trip was 20 mile increments right down the west coast of Canada, right from Alaska, right down as far as we can go before which was almost the entire exact coastline, but we covered a, that coastline the year before anyway that we missed on that round. So we have documentation showing an extinction event playing out on the entire coastline. And let's come over and say good day to everybody. Thank you, everybody. We'll get rid of this. Bring up the... And we never covered the 150 headlines I got in the last couple of days, so we'll save that for tomorrow and the next day. We got to head down to court in a couple of days. And, you know, they demonized me in the media, vilified me in the media, killed my support, uh, except for the people that knew better and the ones that understood what had happened. Uh, and then they vilified me constantly for weeks later in the blogs. They knocked down my site with uh, strikes as I got out of jail and, and neutered me, incapacitated. We're back up and streaming at live stream. Uh, dot com and, and let me just bring up the graphics so everybody that was paying attention will find me after hugs everybody thanks adam k mickey jan brooks and jan never stops folks terry ann ice cream you screen jan's got uh, miss milky the clown one go look it up and go to my youtube beautiful girl by dana at youtube and you'll find links to her and everybody else too uh, if you can't remember that I don't believe the doctors. No, I don't either. Elaine, that's Shani Ken. Nashville, thank you everyone. Albert, for coming by and supporting this epic journey into truth and facts and justice and a way forward for this entire planet. The climate scientists say they're trying to get a way forward to the planet, but they're not. And what we're showing you is why we can never have a way forward unless we deal with it. And that we are capable and that we are a force to be reckoned with. And that when we put our soul like we will have to in the near future. Like if we had a asteroid coming at us, every institution every day would pump out studies and start studies on ways to deal with it in a desperate attempt to save the human race. But we're killing the 8 million other species. We've already killed that Pacific Ocean. You can't stop what happened, but you can stop what's going to happen by mitigating nuclear every way possible, by shutting it down. you got to remember, nuclear boils a million gallons a minute of water. A glass of water has um, a billion creatures. 75 to 100 million of them are the phytoplankton, the basis of the food, the carbon sequestering and the oxygen production of the planet. And so by the definition, every minute, a nuclear power plant, the 440 of them, the boiling water ones, they boiled 10 trillion billion, 10 trillion billion creatures to death and they released them up through them stacks of 440 nuclear power plants every minute. How can that be good? Yeah? Go look at the Pacific Ocean at the nuclear proctologist Go to the bottom of those pages and read those headlines I got there for you. We never got to today. 
And I guarantee you, you'll understand what I'm saying to you. Hugs for everybody. A lot of respect for everybody. You can donate, by the way, anybody that's not familiar, at the Nuclear Proctologist with your credit cards or at PayPal by typing in Dana Durnford at Hotmail.com. Take care, folks.